Hi everyone, I have a little bit of a different intro for you guys today. Um, I have a mail art video for you. I originally did this video for the Simon Says Stamp YouTube channel. Um, I shared that earlier today, and now I thought I'd share it on my channel. So this is an envelope I created using a new stamp set from Simon. It came out in their last monthly card kit. And I did some heat embossed resist with some ink blending with sponge daubers. So along with a lot of the stuff I've shared recently, it has a very autumn color palette. Hope you guys enjoy. Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another mail art video for simusestamp.com. Today I'm going to be using the Sketched Flowers stamp set. This was included in the latest card kit from Simon, and I really wanted to use this stamp set because of the very large floral stamp in it. I thought it would be really pretty to have some flowers and leaves extending off the side of the envelope and then also along the bottom of the envelope. So because I want it to sort of hug that corner, I'm going to stamp this image twice. The first time I have it just hanging off the end of the envelope, and then the second time I stamp it, I'll turn that stamp and I'll use a different corner of it. So I prepped my white envelope with an anti-static powder tool, stamped the image in Versamark ink, and then now I'm applying some white embossing powder. I'm going to do some ink blending over the top of this in a bit, and the heat embossed lines will resist all of that color. So it's a really easy way to get a colorful design, but not have to be too fussy about it. And you'll see what I mean once we get to the blending. So here's that second corner that I stamped, and I'm making sure I press down all areas of that stamp since it is so big. I want to make sure I get a really good impression. So I hit that with my heat tool to melt all the embossing powder. And then now I'm going to move on to the ink blending. And instead of using larger ink blending tools like the mini round blending tool or the um, original blending tool from Ranger, I'm using some sponge daubers. And these are really, really great when you want to have smaller areas of blending and precise placement. Um, also because of these um, foam tools being domed. They don't have any harsh edges, so it's really easy to blend with these and not get any of those strange, um, almost stamped lines you might get when you're using a different type of blending tool. I've been really enjoying using these. So I'm using different colors of Distress Ink. That first color was Fired Brick, and now I'm using Seedless Preserves. This is one of my most favorite colors. I use it very often, and it's this kind of really reddish violet shade. Uh, it's aptly named just like grape jelly or seedless preserves and I, I just think it adds warmth and a rich deepness to every color palette I use it in. So I love to use seedless preserves. So I've included it in three spots on this design and just using the sponge dropper to blend over each one of those flowers. I'm now using fossilized amber which is a great yellow, especially for autumn color palettes. I've been finding myself using fossilized amber more and more recently as I work on fall and autumn themed cards. So I can't get away from it for this one since I wanted to have a little more fall colored flowers. So I'm using fossilized amber here today as well. I brought in a little bit of spiced marmalade, which actually turns out to look really similar to that fossilized amber. So in order to just bring that color in a little bit more, I did take the spiced marmalade and add it over the top of those flowers that I use fossilized amber on. As far as the green areas go on this envelope, I'm going to be using the color Bundled Sage, and I've got three different green areas that I'm gonna be blending on. I've got one in this bottom corner, one in the other bottom corner, and then one in the top corner. So I've got three corners of green, and I'm making sure that I blend all the way up and around those uh, images so that you can see the full leaf design. And I'm softening out those top edges so that it extends out into the rest of the envelope. So there were a couple of areas on this envelope that I wanted to intensify the color, maybe get those um, colors harmonizing a little bit more. So I decided to bring in a little bit of fired brick into the center of the purple flowers. And this is really going to um, kind of give your eye or like a connection between the purple flowers and the red flower. Just having a little bit of red in the center of those purple flowers tends to do that. So I softened out that top edge, that green, 
and then I was ready to move on with putting my vintage postage stamps on the envelope. Well, not putting them on, but I placed them here so that I could use a pencil and draw around that area. That's just going to make sure that I, I don't put any of my envelope addressing up into that area. As far as the addressing the envelope goes, I'm going to be using some pearlescent paints from Fine Tech. I'm using a nice kind of bronzy shade and I'm using a pointed pen for this. So in order to get that watercolor paint to the pen, I'm picking up the paint with a watercolor brush and then just painting the color onto the pointed pen. And as I do the addressing with this pen, I will have to reapply that watercolor paint to my pen multiple times because it will run out fairly quickly since I only put a little bit on the, the tip of the pen. So I'm doing some really simple calligraphy here. This is just my own style that I've developed over the years. Um, it's not too formal. It's a little bit more casual, which I think uh, goes well with the stamping and the ink blending on this particular envelope. And by the way, thanks so much to Shirley for giving me permission to use her address in videos. Whenever I do mail art videos, I like to use real addresses so that I can stick these in the mail and mail them off to viewers and subscribers and friends and family. So I always get permission before I share them online just because I want to make sure that they're okay with having their address shown all over the internet. So I did pencil in some lines on this envelope just as a guide and that really helps me make sure that I have nice precise placement of all these letters. So after I lettered Shirley's address, I then had to letter my address on the flap of the envelope. So I turned it around and I just did really simple cap letters. In fact, you could have done this on the, the main part of the envelope as well. Um, just to keep it really simple. And I really like putting simple cap letters like this on the, the return address areas on my envelopes. So now I'm going to do some erasing of all of the lines that I drew in earlier. And I made sure that this was completely dry before I went in with my eraser. This is a very precise mono eraser from Tombow. Um, I wasn't sure how well all of this lettering would handle the eraser going over the top right away. So I just used that really dainty eraser to get really precise erasing. As far as the vintage stamps go, I don't like to lick these because they're just really old and they just would taste weird and I just don't want to. So I spray water onto a paper towel and then press this postage stamp onto the wet paper towel in order to wet that adhesive that's on the back of the postage stamp. So and you can see that the uh, postage stamps actually color the paper towel a little bit brown. So I'm really glad that I didn't lick these postage stamps because I don't know what was on them. <laughs> so I press those down and then that finishes the envelope for today. If you wanted to protect all of the ink blending with um, micro glaze, you definitely could do that. Um, I tend to live on the wild side and just mail it as is. I figure if there's going to be any water that damages the design of the envelope, it would probably damage the entire envelope completely. So at that point, it would be a lost cause. So I don't worry about um, really protecting areas like that, but you definitely could. I just want to caution you, if you do that, do not put the microglaze over the top of the postage stamps because the postage service will need to cancel those stamps. Thanks so much for watching today. I'll be back again with another mail art video next Thanks month. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that envelope. I really loved the color palette and how everything turned out. So tomorrow, I'm going to be back right away. Well, not right away because I have to edit the video still, but I'll be back with day one of the holiday card series for this year. I'm super excited. I hope you guys are too. So on screen right now, before you guys head out, I've got two more videos for you to check out. Um, I have some mail art for you. So click on any of those if you're interested. And thank you so much for watching. And I will see you tomorrow for day one of the holiday card series. Thanks for watching.